holler ballers as I cut my head off and a bro fist to you all on this fine Monday. You fine Monday indeed. Welcome to the Daily Preach, the only daily that matters and the name that will never change despite how much Twitch believes I am doing some kind of religious cast every day on their gaming network. Mr. Twitch. Mr. Twitch. I know, I, I know you're out there, Mr. Horror. You're trolling, son. Firstly, welcome to The Daily and thank you for tuning in with me. We've had a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. This weekend, if you don't know, we had our 50,000 subscriber web show. Uh, it wasn't so much a special, but we did do something special. Indeed, we had the Battle of Blackrock. I'm pretty close to positive we had the largest amalgamation of capped characters in one battle ever. Ever. I know some people have done, like, uh, some of the big streamers have done things like level 1s versus level 90s where they got people to roll level 1s and so on and so forth. I'm pretty sure we did the largest combination of capped characters ever in the history of World of Warcraft. I can't find anything that even came close. We had literally hundreds of people per side. Hundreds of people. Uh, we had hundreds of hordes, hundreds of alliance. So much the server couldn't really handle it. But I want to say a huge thank you because it was one of the first opportunities we've had to combine the Americans, the Australians, the uh, Euros, and we had a couple of guys from Korea who luckily managed to understand, although I couldn't understand what you guys were saying, but I thank you for the whispers. It was incredible. Absolutely incredible sight to witness, just to watch you guys gathering on either side. And I've got to say, I've never been more impressed especially with an internet community that literally obeyed every request we had. There was no monks. Everyone stayed on ground mounts, pretty much. It was incredible. You're all lined up on your own to give us this whole theme, this whole epic look of all the people all gathered together. Didn't even need much work at all. A big thanks to Vanish and Delore, who managed both of those sides for us while we got set up. It was an incredible sight. The server couldn't handle it, which was a shame. We couldn't show the whole area of Blackrock Mountain. You had to be, literally be stood on top of people for them to load in. That's fine. That's fine. We have no big deal with that at all because it gave us the shots we needed just by moving around the mountain. So a huge thank you to you guys. And I hope you had a spectacular show. We also had the best final transmog competition I could have hoped for. Transmog competition is currently on hiatus. It is not finished. We will do it again at some point, but it is on hiatus. And we finished it this weekend with a themed transmog competition where we had to give multiple winners because they were so good. Raiden, Ezio, they looked glorious. They were fantastic. And the effort you guys put into there, the Golems, the Marios, things from manga characters who I didn't know who they were, but we checked pictures and all that. The Smeagol one. It was absolutely wonderful. You guys just did an absolutely tremendous job. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It was awesome. Absolutely awesome. On top of that, we also started today, big month, right? We also started our, I want to call it live stream summer, but essentially it is the baby countdown. I am due my baby over the course of the next few weeks. As such, there's all kinds of things going on here, such as Emma being unable to sleep, me being unable to sleep, and therefore I decided the best thing I can do is take a little break from writing. The vast majority of my time goes into writing because if I don't sleep properly, for a pretty regular basis, such as the last three weeks, my brain kind of goes to mush, right? You can imagine if you're getting sort of two hours sleep every single night, which is what we get, then generally we're having a bad time in terms of writing some coherent sentences and structure and making sure our storylines don't overlap. I am, of course, talking about Way of the Warrior 2 and the finale and tying the story together. It's a massive scope. So I'm taking a little break from that, and we are, in fact, streaming. We're going to be streaming until the baby arrives. It should be, hopefully... Uh, not too soon, but pretty soon. We're going to be streaming. I am guaranteed to be live from 10 till 12 p.m. UK time. That's GMT or London time for anybody Googling it. But like today, we did eight hours today. I generally start about 8 a.m. And we'll go all the way through to the daily unless something comes up. I just want people to know I'm guaranteed to be live from 10 till 12. Where we finish The Walking Dead 400 Days, the DLC. Not incredible. Very short DLC for anybody wondering to buy it. A very, very short DLC, but a very nice concept. It actually has a sort of finale goal that you can try and aim for. And then we started Batman Arkham City. Which so far, seems pretty good. Pretty good. Not amazing. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm okay with it. It seems fine. Some interesting bosses. Little bit twitchy on the old PC in terms of controls if you're not using a keyboard. Uh, but nothing, nothing, um, you know, nothing horrible going on there. Nothing horrible whatsoever. An absolutely wonderful time. The topic for today is interesting as it was posed to me just seconds before the daily. I had a whole thing lined up about healers and stuff. But people have asked me to discuss what do I think about 
future expansions in terms of races and classes. One of the themes I was going to talk about in terms of World of Warcraft was that people are preparing for the next expansion already. We haven't even had patch 5.4, but it is on the PTR. People are getting a feel for it already. And people are starting to prepare for the next expansion. We're seeing lots of requests and tweets and stuff like that as how their class is going to be fixed in the next expansion. And people are looking really hopeful. People are saying things like healing is too spammy. Will it be fixed next expansion? The answer to that question, if anybody is wondering whether you feel healing is too spammy and it's becoming more like DPS, will it be fixed next expansion? No, absolutely not. It will not be. There is no conceivable method of fixing healing that I can even go near. I will be super surprised if that gets fixed because it's been the same question ever since vanilla. Ever since vanilla. In TBC, we will fix it. In Wrath of the Lich King, we will fix it. In Cataclysm, we will fix it. In Mists of Pandaria, we will fix it. Never has it worked. There has been no way to stop healers just becoming spam heal bots by the end of the expansion. So far, they have never been able to do it without just making healers oom. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about what is going to be the next races and classes. Lots of people want fresh things. Did pandas pick up a huge representation? No, they didn't. A lot of people hated pandas. In fact, a lot of people turned away because of pandas. As if they were somehow forced to roll them. As if you were somehow obligated to roll a pandera. And I refuse to play this game. I refuse to play WoW anymore because there's pandas in it. I generally don't get that. It's not as if you were forced to do it. Um, but people want to see what's new and what's fresh. And I want something new. I want something dandy. I think we can probably already agree that at BlizzCon we're going to see the announcement of the next WoW expansion. Super surprised if that doesn't happen. Super, super surprised. It's almost guaranteed as far as I'm concerned. But we are likely to see a much more adult approach to WoW. Pandera, Mr. Pandaria was kind of a tough choice for Blizz, I think. They wanted to do it an expansion ago, and then this time they finally got round to doing the pandas. It was scheduled, if you believe the leaks, to be the previous expansion. So it shouldn't have been Cataclysm, it should have been Mr. Pandaria then. We're likely to see a more adult-themed expansion. We're likely to see something involve the Burning Legion. We're likely to see some sort of gaudy, big, role-playing character. Someone who has a lot of lore behind him already. Think Arthas in the style of the character we're likely to see. Think Illidan. Think all these big names. Somebody is going to make an appearance. It might be Sergaras. Apologies if I said the name wrong. People are going to get, like, really upset with me for saying Sergaras because they pronounce it differently. Like Rash Al Ghul, apparently, in Batman Arkham City. Um... Sagaras, 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 yeah, whatever. Uh, I think we're likely to see something along those lines. I think it's a nice return, considering Project Titan has been cancelled. This is one of the things we need to take into account when a new expansion comes, is that it's likely we're going to see a big return to the adult theme of something to draw the players back who were lost during Mists of Pandaria thanks to its cute and cuddly nature. A lot of people were really put off by it, including myself. Initially, I was really put off, but then I remembered... Oh, I don't have to roll a panda. Mm. So it doesn't bother me in the least. But I can't say I was overly impressed with the Mr. Pandaria world. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Perhaps you can leave some feedback. I don't think Pandaria is a particularly stunning world in comparison to what we've had in the past. If we compare my Pandaria to Northrend, Northrend wins for me. If we compare it to the Burning Crusade, all the new content that came in then, Nagrand and so on and so forth, I think it was a massive, massive difference in comparison to Pandaria. I think the whole twisting nether, everything about nether storm, all that kind of stuff was absolutely fantastic. It was deep, it was dark, it was ranged variably. If you go from Nagran to the twisting nether or to uh, nether storm, there is an enormous difference, a world of difference. And then we compare it to Ice Crown and so on and so forth. And I would even go as far as to say Cataclysm with its combination of Hyjal and other zones, I think was far superior than Pandaria. Pandaria had one general feel for me. I think that's fair to say. I'm seeing people kind of kind of agree and kind of disagree. Pre is Pandaria beautiful? I am not saying Pandaria is not beautiful. I am not saying that. But I do not get that same sense of variation, that same sort of emotions that come up in different zones. The feel and the atmosphere uh, all seem very samey. To me, personally, I'm not hating on it. I don't think Pandaria is a poorly designed world by any means. Uh, but I do compare it to the other expansions and think they were far superior. What are we going to see in next expansion? Are we going to see a new race and a new class? Well, we had both this time. 
We had both this time. What new races could we be throwing in there? Verkul? The Verkul guys? Tonkas? All this kind of stuff. There are lots of models, and we generally do see some links to what the next, next race is going to be. Linked already in the world. They tend to exist already. We have all these kind of creatures in there. We're like seals. Hmm? Like seals. It's just a strategy you shut up. Yeah. And too opinionated. Personal opinion. Nagas. Ethereals. Uh, there is all sorts of things out there that it could possibly be. But I don't think that is anywhere near as important as what the next class could be. There's a huge problem right now. And that is classes are becoming more homogenized than ever. In fact, one of the big things I've noticed on my YouTube guides and YouTube comments in general, when I do skim over some of the comments, um, is that people really complain about the spells other classes have. Now, that's nothing new. Don't get me wrong, that's nothing new. But we also live in a world now where Blizzard tends to be more forgiving towards that and tends to pl try and appease players in terms of spells other people don't have. As such, would a new class be any good? Before we even discuss what types of classes there could be, would they be any good? How unique can they be? If we look at the Brewmaster, which is obviously the new style, or the Monk, I should say, the new style, very much parts of the Monk are borrowed from other classes already. Okay, it was obvious a lot of people said that like a, a Windwalker is a very much a variation on sort of a Rep Pally Rogue style. A Brewmaster kind of feels unique in terms of its avoidance style, but generally the spells themselves are pretty similar. You might call it Fortifying Brew, but most people will just refer to it as Shield War, and so on and so forth. People would do something along those lines. They're borrowed from there. The Mistweaver, however, I would consider to be a very unique healing class. Its style of healing is both excellent and punishing, depending on the encounter, which a lot of people don't like. A, mind, a mist weaver is extremely powerful in certain encounters they're extremely powerful they're one of the best healing classes if not the best you can get in certain encounters however on other encounters they're quite weak they're quite weak and people don't like that people really don't like that but there are certain spells that have to become part of a class in order for them to work i don't want i'm going to say this outright i don't want to see a new class for at least one more expansion. There's a lot of work to be done with the classes that are currently in-game to warrant there being another class. But new classes do sell. Suppose some of the names are being thrown around here. Demon Hunter. People would love to see a Demon Hunter. They would absolutely adore that. They would love to see a Demon Hunter. Which then needs new balancing and all that kind of stuff. Fourth Specs. There's all kinds of variation, but no. A lot of people seem to agree, but I'd love your feedback again. New classes, were given the state of things like Hunters, given the state of various other classes, who are really stuck. They're really quite stuck. They're in a problem situation that doesn't seem to be getting fixed. I would love to see a revisit of that. Things like Bards, Tinkers, and Engineering, I would love to see eventually. I think that's the important thing to remember is eventually I would love to see that. An engineering based class who uses all kinds of bombs and all sorts of crazy stuff. That would be wonderful. It would be absolutely wonderful to see something like that. It would be wonderful to see a demon hunter with some various spells. Would it be similar to a DK though? Mm, I don't know. Demon hunters in a demon hunt expansion would make sense. Maybe. There's two schools of thought that you can go along with when considering a new class. And of course bards. I don't think bards will ever make it in but... God forbid, I would never play one. I would hate to still be doing... I think if Bards came in, I would probably have to drop WoW Guides immediately. I don't want to play a Bard. Um, but um, there's lots of things you need to consider here. Is that some classes right now are really in a shit position. And adding more classes just creates problems. Where are you going to get the style of play from? Who are you going to borrow from? Are we going to look at players who play two types of class and stick them together? Did they look at rogues and rep pallies having a maybe an average amount of representation? I think we can do something with this in terms of the monk and then stick both of those together. If they just can keep combining and borrowing from other classes, is it fun? Is that interesting? Some people will love it. Some people will adore it. But now we have 12 classes to try and balance around. We've got all this kind of stuff to do. I'm not particularly... I wouldn't be particularly over the moon. I don't think it'd be good for the game, in my opinion, to add more classes. Adding more races doesn't mean nothing to me. It doesn't mean, ain't mean shit to me. Adding more races is just something that you can switch to if you wish. You like the look of it. 
I think removing racials would be a good start. Let's remove the racials before we start adding more races. But new classes is dangerous in my eyes. It's really dangerous. Because there are just not we just don't have the balance now. We don't have the balance, we don't have the variations in playstyle. They seem stuck on hunters. They've mentioned many times, and I'm gonna use the hunter as the main example here, is that all the hunter specs play exactly the same. They don't feel any different. They play their gameplay is exactly the same. Whether you call it Black Arrow or whether you call it Chimera Shot, doesn't really matter. Does it? It doesn't matter if you call it that. Because they're still the fucking same. They're still the same playstyle, they're still the same buttons, they go on the same key binding, and it's just not fun. They even believe rogues are too similar. I would kind of disagree with that. I think rogues are in a good place right now. Personally, from playing my rogue, other people will disagree, of course. Um, but we're stuck in this place where adding more classes doesn't seem to be the solution if you're just going to leave the other classes. If we're just going to abandon the other classes and not work out how to make them different, is it easier? Is it easier just to make a new one than to fix what we already have? Is it easier to do that? It's got to be said, the next expansion has to be pretty incredible, doesn't it? It has to be pretty good. Because Project Titan isn't coming. It was scheduled to come. The next big thing. This is going to bring everybody in. We're going to separate them out. But we can't do that now. The game doesn't exist. It's gone. It's finished. So now we need people to come back to WoW. How are we going to see decisions being made, and this is the second line of thought, which are just to bring players into the game? Does new classes bring players into the game? Yes, it does. Absolutely. Do new races bring players into the game? Yes, they do. People want to try it out. If they don't have brand new things, every expansion, some people are turned away by that. Some people don't care. A lot of people will have played Mists of Pandaria purely to try out the monk, to try out being a panda. Maybe I'll like the panda, play that. And it's always that decision of what's best for the business, what's best for the game. You would like them to be hand in hand, but it's not, is it? It's not hand in hand. Would I eventually like to see a demon hunter? Absolutely. Absolutely. Necromancers are being mentioned. All this kind of stuff. And we can have any solution we want to this race thing. But is it going to be good for the game long term? Maybe. That's also a difficult choice. If we bring a ton of new players back into the game, maybe that is good long term. As we have all these players, fresh faces, doing all kinds of things. All these interesting switches and variations. How does this occur to raid balance? If we stick as a 10-man, which I don't think we'll do, I think we'll see the switch to 15-man and probably be announced at BlizzCon, give us plenty of time to prepare for that. If we stick to 10-man, now we've got 12 classes to fit inside a 10-man. Better or worse? How do raid buffs work now? Do we just give them everybody the raid buffs? We've seen 10-man raids already on the workshop that can't cover just over half of the raid buffs in a 10-man. And now we've got 12 classes to fit in there? It's an interesting question there to be asked. An interesting question there to be asked. So I'd love to see your feedback on what do you think. Race is good? Class is good? Do you want to see new more, more of them? Do you not want to see more but think they will put them in anyway just to bring more people back into the game as a selling point? Something we can put on a screen and say there are new classes. There are new races. Do you want to see any? Are you playing a class that's really fucking screwed and you want them to fix that instead? In before everybody says that. <laughs> fix these first. Lots of interesting variation in there. Some people just love the idea of having new classes. No blame with that at all. I wanted to finish up on the last 10 minutes or so of the daily on the topic that came up in the day, in uh, the streaming today. As much as I prepared a daily for today, I thought I'd take the, the interesting choice that people were discussing before the daily. Is the idea of WoW being a loot-driven game? The interesting question came up when I said I did not enjoy Borderlands 1 or 2. I tried to play Borderlands 2 with Ghost. We both have a copy. We both came here. We sat next to each other. We had a LAN. We fired up Borderlands 2. And pretty quickly, both of us stopped playing it. Pretty damn quickly, we both stopped playing it. You would think we would love that. Two best friends in a room together, a mini LAN, a game where we can shoot the crap out of stuff, get stuff done, sniper rifles, miniguns, the whole works. But we did not continue playing that game. We both stopped. Neither of us really enjoy dungeon crawler games. And I said the simple comment is I do not enjoy loot driven games. Which then re replies with we play World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is clearly, clearly a loot driven game. Is it? Is it a loot driven game? Because I, I have never played it that way. Never. I have never been loot driven in World of Warcraft in my entire life. I have never played World of Warcraft with the aim of getting loot. Ever. But I feel 
I feel as I'm in, I am in the vast minority. The vast minority. As I played for so long and loved every minute of it, there have been some downtimes, but not for very long. I've never really quit for more than a couple of weeks, if that. I've never cancelled my subscription for more than it would automatically renew. But I have never played it in a loot-driven sense. I've never really... I've played for an item. Let's be, diff let's be clear about this. I have definitely gone to a dungeon to pick up an item, but more because the item is very powerful and I could do with having it. I've never logged in and gone, oh, I can't wait to get X. I can't get, wait to get Y. And in doing so, I completed every piece of content in the game up until Mr. Pandaria, which is when I started making guides for you guys. But do Blizzard believe it's loot-driven? Most of the people would agree that WoW is very loot-driven, and the players themselves are loot-driven. Driven to log in to acquire loot. I pointed out the simple fact that I have almost in unintentionally proven the fact that I do not play for loot-driven reasons, and that is because I do not care about things like reputation anymore. I acquire loot in the past based on the content I would be doing. If I needed the best gear in order to compete at a world-class level in the next tier, then of course I would go to farm raids and do something along those lines. But I was never shy about the fact that I would leave if the opportunity came up from the raid. If we are doing a farm raid and there's a spot opening up, can anybody leave? I was the first to vote. The absolute first. I would be the first out the door to log out because I've killed these bosses and I quite frankly do not give a shit about farming bosses for that trinket. If it drops while I'm in the raid and I win it, fine. Do I want to give up a lot of time in order to get it? Depends. How powerful is it? Do I need it for the next tier? Will we fail if I do not have it? But I think that... Um, a lot of the responses we get from players and a lot of responses we get from Blizzard themselves are promoting the idea that WoW is very loot driven. And it's not something I ever really considered, which might sound stupid, but it's not. As I never played that way, and I always did my guides based on the idea that we're not being loot driven, I used to gear, or purposely, intentionally, gear my characters in such a way that I had the absolute worst gear possible. So many of you have seen the videos where I wore the worst gear possible and didn't bother really farming gear to show you the mechanics of the class as it wasn't necessary. I certainly didn't think, God, I need to gear my rogue. God, I need to gear this. God, I need to gear that. Now I need to gear some characters in order just to show you the new LFR and how your class plays there and things like that. But I've never considered it loot-driven. I've never played that way and I've had an absolute blast of a time playing World of Warcraft and never been loot-driven. Do you consider yourself loot-driven? Do you think the game is loot-driven? Am I playing it wrong? Am I playing it wrong? Agree with boss kill driven. I would say that. I was boss kill driven. Anytime I wanted loot, it was in order to kill the next boss. If we were under geared as a tank, I would gladly gear up harder in order to do that. But I didn't care for the loot. It was just a needed. It was just a byproduct of what I did. Would you raise still for some hard and challenging raid achievements? It's difficult to discuss my motivations for playing WoW. I think it's pretty obvious that my only intention of ever playing WoW was in order to kill bosses. Achievements, not so much. Was I the guy to join the alt raid that went to get glory of the whatever? No. And nobody would ask me. No one would be asking me either. Can you come and do this? No. They wouldn't ask me. If they needed a tank for something like a ZA time bear run, then yes, I would go along. But that was because that was my role in the guild. But if it was, oh, for fun, we're going to do glory of the 10. No, not at all. And nobody would bother asking me. So achievements never mean much to me either. They don't. I just play to get the boss kill and then I could go away and do it. Not being forever alone, a lot of people wanted to play, but, you know, that wasn't my kind of thing. Um, no need for other reasons. We've got, any other questions? We've got any questions regarding that? I just wanted to put the question out there to discuss on Thursday. I thought it was kind of interesting that I'd never played WoW as a loot-driven a loot driven game. And it's one of the reasons I seriously hate dungeon crawler games, your Diablos, your Torchlights. I have no interest in them whatsoever. Playing for gear never really does that for me. And I always wonder why... If people are playing very loot driven, does it cause you more frustration? Because you are loot driven. You are loot driven. And therefore, when you're not getting your loot, I've always, I've always seen the loot whores complain and never really got it. It was like, you just care too fucking much. You care too much about loot. But perhaps I'm wrong. I feel I'm in the minority when people lose their shit over items. I definitely feel like I'm in the minority. <laughs> and no, as a baby is coming, no, I will not be raiding again. I will not be raiding anytime soon. Anytime soon. Definitely. Gotta get the Heroic Thunder Forged. Exactly. I don't know any raider who really cares. They're pissed off if they don't get the Heroic Thunder Forged. Because they want it for the next tier. But it's not like they crave it. It's not like they crave it at all. 
I guess the one summation of this is I've never cared about loot if I wasn't doing content that needed it. Whereas a lot of players log in desperately needing their LFR sets, desperately needing X trinket, desperately needing Y. And then I say, what content are you doing? So, oh, well, I do a normal raid and every now and again, I mostly do my dailies. But I desperately need item level 600 gear in order to achieve that. And I never really get that. I thought it was certain. <laughs> I think it's the difference in gear now. Back in vanilla and gear, you hit 60. You did much better, but not uh, but not to level your 440 questing blues in vanilla. Yeah, gear is different. I definitely think the older player base, which is a lot of people, don't care as much for loot now. Purely because it's going to be reset and they know it. If you've been through several item resets like we have, I don't really care. Uh, when it's all replaced by questing gear. I think at the beginning of the Burning Crusade, particularly, I was a little bit pissed. In the beginning of Wrath is that I was giving up stuff that I'd worked really hard for, for crappy clown gear item, but it never really bothered bothered me too much. Never really bothered me too much. To the fail boss. A good question. Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. When you go to a new boss, do you care more about what it could drop than killing it that's the question i want to put to you because that might put you into a certain way of playing do you go to a new boss and check the dungeon journal for what this boss could drop or do you want to kill the boss first and then you start caring about what it drops there's the question first kill you killed the last boss item was dropped you moved on from horrid onto the council do you check what this guy can drop or do you want to know? Or do you just want the kill? Do you just want to kill it and get that kill and get the progress? Or do you care more about, you know, oh, I hope the trinket drops. Or I hope the boots drop. Or something along those lines. Something like that. Because there are a lot of players out there who do that. They get to new boss and they instantly check the dungeon journal or whatever. Or Atlas loot or whatever was in the past. Just to see what it drops. They don't care about killing the boss and working really hard to kill the boss. They hope it dies in order to get an item. That's what I that's what I think is the difference between some players. Check for my best in slot for the coin roll. <laughs> it's fun questions to leave you with there, okay? New classes and stuff like that. I think that's a, a good start to the week so we can talk about these things on Thursday. A few questions posed to you there to discuss. A couple of videos going out for you tonight, including the second half of the web show. And of course, a clips, a little put together of what happened at the Battle of Blackrock that so many of you tuned in for. There's no story giveaways in the video. No story giveaways, but I will show a few clips of you guys decked out, add some special effects and stuff like that. Thank you so much for tuning in with me all day. It's been a nice nine hours. I think it's all well, pretty close to nine hours. I had great fun. I should be online uh, live streaming tomorrow from 8 a.m. UK time for those of you who are awake, but I promise to be on by at least 10 o'clock. Have a great evening, guys, whatever you're doing. I think Mr. Law might be taking over. Maybe. Um, see you later, guys. Bye.